Lesson 16, Irrational Numbers. So, <coughs> rational numbers, we're going to talk about those first. These are numbers that can be written as fractions using integers. So they can be written as fractions. So for example, 10 over 2, which is 5. So 5 is rational. Um, 1 third, which as a decimal, 0 0.3 with the, with the vinculum. That's a rational number because it can be written as a fraction. So decimals that continue <coughs> forever can be rational if they repeat. So if you can find a pattern that repeats in your decimal number, then it is rational. So the decimal number, 0.123 with a vinculum over all three numbers, which means it repeats, this is rational, it's rational. If it does not repeat and it doesn't stop, then it's called irrational. And those ones cannot be written as a fraction. So they are non-repeating, non-terminating, decimals. Terminating just means that it ends. So non-terminating would mean that the decimal number just keeps going on and on. There's no pattern. It doesn't start repeating. Those are irrational. Pi is an irrational number. The number is actually pi. That's a number. Some kids get scared of pi. They don't know they're scared of it because they always want to do 3.14, which is not pi. You guys understand that? Mm -hmm. Pi is not equal to 3.14. That is, um, pi is actually equal to 3.14159 and then it continues and does Choose not end. So when we estimate pi, we can use 3.14 or even we use 22 sevenths sometimes, but those numbers do not equal pi because pi is irrational. Um, when we look at the square root of 36, this is rational because it actually equals 6, which can be written as a fraction, 6 over 1 or 12 over 2 or 18 over 3. Um, the square root of 37 is irrational because we can't simplify it at all. That's the answer, is, or that's the number is square root of 37. And sometimes we get that number as an answer. And it's okay, we don't have to be afraid of writing a square, an irrational number as an answer to any problem because it is a number. So in our math, we talk about real numbers. So we're going to be all about real numbers, and within ir real numbers, there's two sets. They do not overlap. One of them is the irrational numbers, and the other set is rational numbers. And if you remember, we've already talked about all the different rational numbers we can have. We can have integers and whole numbers and counting numbers. Um, I think it was yesterday we talked about perfect squares and I said you're going to see it a lot and so guess what we get to see it one more time. Perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64 and you need to realize that these are the same as 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. So it's just the counting numbers squared. So I write these right above them just to kind of help you remember um, what they are. Now sometimes we're asked the 
what two, let's see, how do we say it? They say what two consecutive numbers does the square root of 7 come between? So the square root of 7, if we look at the radicand, we look <laughs> at where 7 would fall between these, this list of numbers here. 7 would be between 4 and 9. So the square root of 7 is between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. But those are just 2 and 3. So the square root of 7 is between 2 and 3. So when you're asked what is the square root of some number, what, what two consecutive numbers is it between, if you look at this list, it really helps you to see where, the, where it would fall. Um, compare. So sometimes we're asked to compare. We have the square root of 9 and the square root of 5. So we know that if we look um, up here, since 9 is bigger than <coughs> 5 in this list here, square root of 9 would be greater than the square root of 5. The square root of 5 does not have a decimal number that ends. It is irrational, but we know that square root of 9 is 3, square root of 5 is going to be smaller than that. Compare the square root of 16 and the square root of 23. So if we look at our list up here, 16 comes before 23, or you just can remember when you're counting, 16 comes before 23, so this is greater than. And the square root of 16 equals 4, and we know the square root of 23 is going to be a little bit less than 5, because the square root of 25 is equal to 5, so this is going to be a little bit less than 5. Okay, I have one more concept to go over. And that is, if you are given the area of a square and you want to know the side length. So let's draw a square inside, write 25 feet squared. So if we have a square, the area is 25 sque feet squared, what is the side length? The side length is going to equal the square root of whatever the area is, 25 feet squared. So S, we'll just call that S equals the side length is 5 feet. If you had a square whose area was 17 centimeters squared, the side length, we have to do the same thing that we did up here, is the square root of 17 feet. And you don't want to be afraid of that number. That's just a number. That's how long the side is. Okay, that's the end of the lesson.